The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the webinar. I'm super excited to have you all here today. We have a really, really great topic that I can't wait to dig into. This is going to be a super fun topic to really dissect. So thank you all for joining the webinar today. We're going to get started in just a minute here, but I want to allow folks just another minute to join. And I want to make sure that everyone on the call today is able to use the question box feature in GoToWebinar. So I always love to see where, where people are calling in from. So type into the question box, which is essentially going to act as your chat box with me as your organizer today so that I can see your responses throughout the webinar. So type into that box where you're calling in from today just to warm up, make sure that you can use the feature. And I want to see where everyone's calling in from. For example, I'm calling in from Boston, Massachusetts. I love it up here. I live here. I grew up here. So I always love to see other folks on the webinar. And that's the beautiful thing about these webinars is they're virtual. So we're bringing a bunch of different people on different corners of the world together for the same presentation. And I have a ton of responses coming in already right now. So here we have some folks. I know some folks calling in from Brooklyn, New York. Welcome. We have so many people coming in. Tiffany from New Jersey. Welcome. Renee from University of Florida. Welcome. We have Karen from Massachusetts as well. Welcome, Karen. Hank from Las Vegas. Welcome, Hank. We have Carrie from Montgomery, Alabama. Welcome, Carrie. We have Michelle from Scottsdale, Arizona. Welcome, Michelle. We have some folks from Los Angeles, some folks from Ontario, Canada, London, Ontario. Welcome, Caitlin. We have Bobby from Nashville. Welcome. We have Mary from York, Pennsylvania. We have Monique from Calgary, Alberta, Canada. Welcome. We have Julia from Manhattan, New York. Welcome. We have Hannah from Vancouver. We have some folks from other folks from other parts of California. Mike from Newport Beach, California. Lisa from Milwaukee. Welcome, Lisa. Tom also from Boston. Welcome, my fellow Bostonians. Sarah from Pennsylvania. Evan from New Jersey. This is wonderful. Hannah Hannah's calling in as well from Boston, Massachusetts. We have Howie from Tampa. Welcome. So many people on this call today. I wish I could call you all out. I really appreciate you all joining. And it's just super interesting to see all the different folks that we have on here today and um, where they're all calling in from. So thanks for doing that little warm up exercise with me. We're going to jump into a few housekeeping items for today's presentation. So a couple of things to know when you're listening into this webinar today. It will be recorded. So don't worry about taking notes or anything like that. Um, you'll be able to access the recording easily on the WordStream and Local IQ YouTube channels, or you can also easily access it um, from the materials that will get sent to your inbox later today. So like I mentioned, it will be recorded. Don't worry about that part. Um, you'll be able to access the recording later. Also, again, like I mentioned, you'll get the materials in your inbox. So keep your eyes peeled for that later on. And as you just saw, you can use this question box feature throughout the webinar. Um, to throw in questions for the Q&A session at the end. So make sure that you're asking questions throughout and saving some of your questions for the Q&A at the end where I will go through all the questions. Um, we, if you've attended any of our past webinars, you know that our Q&A sessions are really in depth. I always enjoy doing them. So I'm super excited to dive into this one as well. So be sure to send in your questions at the end for the Q&A. So for all of the folks on the call today, some of you might be familiar with Local IQ or our sister brands, Reach Local and WordStream. You might be already working with us. You might be totally new to us, and that's great too. So for everyone on the call that has different levels of familiarity with the sisterhood of brands of Local IQ, Reach Local and WordStream, I want to get us all on the same page on who Local IQ is. And essentially, we're an all-in-one marketing platform that helps businesses find, convert, and keep customers. So we marry that proprietary marketing technology with first-in-class service and free tools at your fingertips to help give time back into your day to manage your business while we keep your marketing running um, and going strong. A common question that I get asked a lot in these webinars is how can you learn more about the topics that we cover here? How can you learn more about what we offer here at Local IQ, WordStream, Reach Local? Um, definitely check out our websites, our blogs on localiq.com and wordstream.com. They're super in-depth. They cover a lot of the topics that we talk about in these webinars in-depth over there. So if you ever want more information, have more questions, definitely check out our blog um, to get some more in-depth articles on the topics that we cover. 
Also be sure to follow us on our social media profiles. We're on LinkedIn, Twitter, and Facebook. So that way you can get updates on future upcoming webinars. You'll also be able to get updates on recent case studies, recent blog posts, other types of articles and events that we're, we're doing and promoting. So definitely check those out if you wanna learn more about the digital marketing space. And a little bit of me, your speaker here today. It's wonderful to meet you all. My name is Susie. I'll be your presenter today. Um, I am a content marketing specialist over at Local IQ, where I write educational content on everything under the digital marketing sun. So from anything from SEO to PPC to email marketing to social media, anything and everything that falls under digital marketing, I write about. And how I came into this role is I actually was previously a digital marketing consultant at WordStream, coaching businesses and clients folks like all of you on this call today through their marketing best practices. So I took that real in, in real life experience working with real accounts and applied it to the educational content that I write today. Um, a fun fact about me is I am based in Boston, like I mentioned, and I do love it up here and we're fast approaching my favorite season, which is some winter. I love to go snowboarding on the weekends once the snow hits. So I'm really looking forward to that. So a couple of things that we're going to be covering today and talking through is first we're going to talk on touch on social media marketing and advertising and why you should care about avoiding social media mistakes why you should be even thinking about marketing and advertising on social media so we're going to cover a quick intro section on that with some pretty interesting stats and then we're going to go into those 15 spooky and scary social media mistakes that you never want to make uh, so we'll be talking about some of those, what to look out for, what that might look like, and how your business or your brand um, can avoid it. And then we'll also be talking about a couple of thought starters, some key takeaways that I want you all to keep in mind uh, after you leave the webinar, and we'll jump into our Q&A section. So if you've attended any of our past webinars, you know I love to keep people on their toes. So I love to warm everyone up with a quick pop quiz. So type into the question box, you know, as a consumer, we have these experiences, right? Have you ever interacted with a business on social media? How was that experience? Did you maybe see a post? Did you DM them? Did you comment on their post? Was it a positive experience? Did they comment back? Were they kind of MIA? Did you try and find them on social media and you couldn't? Um, for example, I know I definitely interact with a lot of my favorite brands and small local businesses online. Um, and on social media. Some of them have been really great. I know it makes me feel really good when they repost like any stories or shout outs that I do for them. And then others sometimes will just totally ignore me or I'll see that they saw my mention and didn't do anything. And I'm like, why are they on there? Um, if they're not going to respond to, you know, their loyal followers that do care about their business. So we have um, a couple of people typing in their responses here. James says that sometimes it's positive, positive experience. Sometimes people never respond. Definitely get it for sure. Uh, we have Beverly here who says she's a senior citizen back at it, very new to social media. Welcome Beverly. Everyone at all levels of the social media game is welcome here today. So congratulations on being on here today. Tiffany says that she tries to engage, some engage back, some engage, some don't. Howie says he's seen sponsored ads, but they seem sketchy. We're definitely going to talk about that today, Howie. Great call out. Um, that says, yes, she has interacted with businesses on social media, but the response rate is about 50 50. Um, some other folks here said that they have a positive experience on post comments, but they have a mixed experience with DM replies. Definitely true. Um, and Cindy, from the her perspective as working as promoting her brand on social media, says she tries to respond to everybody, but that's also difficult too. So we as consumers and also marketers can understand both sides of the coin right so it can be difficult when you're a marketer and managing you know multiple different social media profiles to make every follower feel special but as a consumer you want that individual attention on social media so we'll kind of talk about that a little bit today so let's first start with you know why your social media marketing and advertising matter so much why we're even doing this whole webinar dedicated just to social media today and it kind of makes sense because the majority of your customers are most likely on social media i know i'm guilty of spending way too much time on social media and i'm sure a lot of people on the call can probably say and say say the same because it is pretty addictive in total there's almost four billion monthly active users on social media um, the average person spends almost 
two and a half hours a day on social media. That is a lot of time. And um, most of them are accessing on a mobile device, right? So we're working with smaller screens, we're working with shorter attention spans, but we do have the majority of our customer base having this individualized attention on their social media for hours at a day. So it, it really can be a key marketing tool because most people outside of being glued to their phones on social media are bustling through their day, they're commuting, they're not necessarily paying attention to a lot of the real world ads or TV or radio ads that are inundated in their everyday lives that they see all the time. So these social media ad marketing and advertising tactics can really help you stand out in those crowded spaces um, and get that individualized attention from your customers. Um, so we know how many consumers are on there and we know your target audience is most likely on social media. But are other businesses doing this too? Like, is it really worth it for you? Is it you know, gonna help you get ahead of your competition? And the answer is yes. The majority of businesses are using social media for marketing. So they are doing some type of social media marketing and advertising. That's a really high percentage. So if you're not doing social media marketing and advertising yet, you definitely wanna get started because odds are with this stat here, your competition is definitely on there. Um, and why it can also be effective is people are using social media to research products and um, purchases that they want to make more and more. So we see here the growth and what we see most of the platforms or the majority of consumers that people are, are, are using these different platforms to research different um, products that they might want to buy, research different businesses that they want to, you know, buy services from, things like that. All of these platforms here are the majority of the major platforms that we'll talk about when we talk about social media marketing and advertising. And they all have super high percentages of the amount of people that actually are on there looking to research your business. So it really is important because it's not just like people are simply, you know, going to the phone book to find a local business to work with or, you know, asking a family or family member or a friend. We don't always have, you know, people by us to give us a word of mouth recommendation or, you know, a place down the street that we know we can definitely do business with. So we find ourselves on social media on these different platforms to research businesses. So let's get into the scary mistakes. It's spooky season. Halloween is coming up. So I wanted to give you all a little bit of a spook with these super scary social media mistakes. And trust me, they are the cringiest, most cringeworthy mistakes that you absolutely want to avoid. And I cannot wait to get into it because it's going to give you a laugh. So before we get into some of the really funky social media mistakes, there is the first mistake that I started with here is less laughable and more serious because I wanted to start with the one that I thought was the most important and that is your social media goals because your social media marketing and advertising is only going to be as effective as you have as the purpose that you put behind it so if you don't have a purpose behind your social media ads or your social media marketing posts they're probably not going to be as effective because they're not going to have that clear intent there they're not going to have that clear intention that action that you want those use viewers to take. They're not gonna be clear in what you're trying to convey to your audience because you're not gonna be clear on it. So you really need to get tightened up with your social media goals first. So if you forget your goals and you're just posting the post, it's not gonna be as effective because they, they're not purpose driven. Um, so if you don't have social media goals for your marketing and advertising set in place yet, totally okay, totally fine. It's not too late to set those up. What I recommend to folks is to follow the SMART exercise. Some of you might be familiar with this. It's pretty common, um, totally fine if you're not, but pretty much what you wanna do is for your overarching, you know, your social media strategy and try and bring this down to your individual posts too. Have a goal set in place that abides by these SMART ramifications, which means your goal for your social media posts and your overall social media strategy should be specific, right? So instead of saying, all right, I wanna grow my Instagram following, you wanna say, I wanna grow my Instagram following by X amount, by X date, and this is exactly how I'm going to do it. That's gonna make it much more attainable than just saying you wanna grow your Instagram following. Cause then it's like, well, how do you wanna do that? And how do you know if you did? Um, and how do you measure that? So that brings me to the second point of it also being measurable. Make sure you have your measurement and your reporting in place when you're doing your social media marketing and advertising. So that way you can really understand the um, impact that your efforts have. 
And then you also want to make it achievable, right? So again, using that example, if I want to grow my Instagram following, great. But realistically, if I only have 100 followers, I'm probably not going to get 100,000 followers by next week, right? So I want to do small increments and in attainable, realistic goals so that I'm able to easily get to those goals and then grow from there. Ideally, we would all love to grow our Instagram following by, you know, double it, you know, within a day, but that's just not realistic. And you need to understand that, you know, the hardest part of marketing, the hardest part of social media advertising and marketing is patience, right? So it's going to take some patience and it's going to take levels of different goals throughout your journey. You also want to make sure that this, these goals that you're setting are relevant. So if you are looking to, you know, grow your following, how does that connect back to your overall business objectives? If growing your following is just to grow your following, you know, that might not necessarily make sense. You might want to be focusing more on the engagement and the interactions that you foster and the relationships you build with your current followers rather than just growing new followers. So thinking about what's relevant, what you're currently working on, you know, if you're trying to promote, you know, a new product that would align to other probably marketing tactics that you're doing to promote that product elsewhere. And then you also want to make sure that it's time bound. So giving yourself a time frame into how you're going to achieve this goal is going to help make hold yourself accountable and make it more achievable. So now we're jumping into some of the funny ones. Um, copy typos. Obviously, we can't get through a list of social media mistakes without talking about this. I'm sure a lot of you have probably seen this on social media. And it happens a lot more often than you think, as you can see from this example from a big brand like McDonald's even does it sometimes. And obviously, you know, we all make mistakes, right? It's going to happen. You're going to have typos in your social media marketing and advertising. But as much as you can do to minimize that, it's going to really make the difference. Because as you can see here, the majority of your consumers are most likely going to be on the lookout for that. They're not going to trust your brand and they're not going to want to do business with you if you have spelling errors and bad grammar in um, your social media posts and marketing and advertising. So the third one here is using the wrong image sizes or video specs. Um, so this is really common as well. And you can see on this example on this left. So the funny thing about this example on the left is I, this is a local business that I frequent and I actually love this business. I follow them on social media. They're great. But I know even as a marketer, but even as a consumer that this post right here is just nails on a chalkboard into me when I'm looking at it because I can't see what they're posting. It's not super clear. It's clearly like a screenshot. It's not, you know, cropped, right? And I, I feel bad looking at it this way because I, I do love this business. And as you can see on the right, it's an amazing business, but since they had this poorly cropped, poorly poor quality picture in their post, they actually didn't get any interactions or comments on this post. So I think this is a really clear example of how business can be really great, but if it doesn't have the clear, clean social media posts that people are looking for, they're not going to get the interaction that they ideally want. So use our handy social media size guide on the right to know, you know, the right specs, the right sizes of different photos and videos that you should be following. Um, you can also easily find this on our blog. And again, you'll get the recording later. So don't worry about getting all of these sizes down now. But my point is here. Just double check. Sometimes in ads as well, in ad creative, you could get those images um, awkwardly cropped. Um, you know, things could be blurry. So you just really want to avoid that. It's just a really bad um, user experience for your followers. So another really common thing that I see far too often is businesses that only post photos to their social media pages or not, not even photos at all and just do text-based posts and they don't leverage videos. When videos, actually the majority of your consumers are preferring to learn a product or service, learn about a product or service through a video. And that's, be and that's because, you know, it's easier to digest. It's, we're moving towards a more video friendly landscape on social media. You know, if you think back to when Instagram started, right, it was made to just share stagnant photos. But now, if you look, pop on Instagram right now, you're going to see nothing but videos and reels and rarely do you see, you know, stagnant photos. So in implementing that video strategy, it's going to be really important for your social media marketing and advertising. Um, again, and it 
clearly will give you a payout here because you businesses that do leverage video tend to see you know higher growth in revenue and more qualified leads um, so definitely try it out and when i say videos i don't mean you know putting a ton of budget towards a whole production um, you know i think a lot of businesses think that and think it's unattainable i understand that that's not feasible for most businesses but really it can be as simple as self-shooting a video on your iPhone or on your phone, whatever Android, whatever you're using or your employee might be using, doing a quick little you know, DIY video like that can be just as effective when you upload it to social media. And I think that's what users are also looking for in such a saturated space. They don't need that super cleaned up you know, video production that you might put towards you know, your OTT ads or something like that. Um, they're looking for, you know, that organic, you know, very natural types of videos. Maybe it's a behind the scenes. Maybe it's a quick employee interview. Maybe it's a funny video. You know, anything you can do to kind of add a little bit of more personality to your social media accounts is really going to help here. And over here on the right, we see this lovely customer testimonial video. Um, so that's another example of a video that you could be using and that it won't take a ton of time to or resources to actually produce. So poor editing. Now I do consider this different than copy typos because there's a lot more that can go into your editing here. Um, I want to first draw your attention to this um, example over here on the right. This is from IHOP. They just missed the mark. They are a family-friendly establishment, but this post is nothing far from family-friendly. It is um, honestly quite off taste and could be offensive to some folks. So definitely want to avoid that. I understand what they were trying to do to here, but like a quick editing session from a copy editor or someone just looking over to make sure that they're aligning with their brand would be able to catch this and say, yeah, this is clever, this is funny, but it's not going to align with our brand. It's not going to align with our style. It's not going to align with our voice. And if you're thinking about, you know, maybe some of the other promotions that you've seen from IHOP out there, they're nothing like this. They're all, you know, family friendly, talking about just coming in, getting a quick bite to eat, talking about the food. So I have no, they have no reason to differentiate from that voice here in this social media post. So what I want you folks to be looking for when you're doing your editing sessions is basically it falls into three main buckets. Your copy, right? So talking about those errors, those typos, the smell it, spelling mistakes, that's what you wanna be catching there. But you also wanna be checking off a few boxes here. So you wanna make sure that you have a clear call to action in your copy. So that means that whatever you're trying to have your followers do after they see your post, that's clearly conveyed, right? So if you want them to click to your website, say that you want them to click to your website or else it's going to be unclear and you're not going to get as many actions as you ideally wanted out of that post um, and then also trying those hot social media trends to just try and get your business out there help you stand out so using things like emojis using things like hashtags um, can really help um, elevate your social media copy as well also looking into your image and video quality so not only do you want to make sure you're on the right sizing and specs but you also want to just take a, a quick editing view at it from the user or viewer perspective here. So is it, does it have smooth transitions? Is it easy to follow? Does it make sense? Is it, you know, do I have the correct alt text or captions to make it, you know, accessible for all different types of folks out there that are looking at it? Um, so you wanna be looking at some of those more um, detailed editing uh, features as well. And then I did kind of touch on this a little bit already with the IHOP example, but bringing it back around you know, making sure that we're aligning with our brand and our purpose. So connecting back to our goals. Does this post help align with, help me meet my goals? If it doesn't, you know, why am I posting it, right? Um, is it clear that it belongs to me? So if I were to read this post without IHOP's little handle there and nobody told me, you know, where it was from, I honestly would have no idea that it came from IHOP because I wouldn't think IHOP when I'm thinking this type of language, right? And then also, again, you know, aligning that, tone, that voice, that style, using this, you know, same colors throughout your post to align back to your brand logo is another example. So those are some of those things that you want to be looking out for when you're editing. Um, if you feel like you don't necessarily always have time to do, you know, those in-depth editing sessions, that's where you want to start thinking about how you can leverage um, tools and online tools or, you know, marketing partners, things like that, that can 
do that editing and that in-depth um, copy editing and look at, look at the content for you. So I talked about this a little bit, but I wanted to go into this a little bit more in depth with the brand style. So strength and brand style is actually really common on social media too. And it's not just, you know, mismatching your voice and tone, but it can just be inconsistencies, inconsistencies with the logos that you're using or the colorways that you're using across your pages. Um, and what that conveys to a user is they're gonna get to your page and congratulations on pulling people to your social media page. But when they get there, they're gonna have no idea that it's actually you. They're gonna be very unsure. They're not gonna be sure that they're in the right place. I've definitely had that happen where I'm looking up for a business, trying to find a brand on you know, Instagram or Twitter. And I look up just the name, you know, maybe the brand name that I know of them. And then I click on the first result and then I get there and I'm like, well, is this really their business account? Because I wanna follow their main account, right? And it is more common than you think. Like the reason why I think through this and why a lot of social media users view it this way is because there are a ton of fake accounts out there. Actually, 2.2 billion fake accounts were reported just on Facebook alone in the past couple of years. That's a ton. We've probably all ourselves seen a fake account once or twice on social media. So you wanna make sure that your business doesn't look like a fake account. And things that can make it look fake are not having a lot of posts, um, not again, clearly having your branding stand out. So not having the right colors, not having the right logo, um, not featuring some of the main things that you would discuss on your page. And I think this is a really good example of this. Again, another great business here over on the right that I know of, but what I would say is if I didn't know this business and I came here, it, I will give them credit that they use a logo here, but I still feel like I wouldn't be totally sure that this is the right account because first off, they only have five posts. So off the bat, I'm like, all right, why aren't they posting more? Why aren't they, you know, promoting the business, the tattoos that they do, right? Because this is a tattoo place. So if there's no pictures of the actual work that they do, how would I know that this is definitely them? And then again, it's just it's just kind of a mismatched colorway here. They're not using um, a lot of the lo logo and branding tools that they could be using to really make this um, business come to life. So it's not like, I like to use examples sometimes like this that where it's not totally missing the mark, but there's still little things that you can pick out here that you would say, mm, I can make that stronger in my own business's account. So something else that I touched on in that pop quiz question um, that I wanna cover is ignoring tags, mentions, and messages. So you wanna be checking your inboxes, your notifications every day. If, you, if that's not feasible, try at least every other day. You'll be surprised once you start posting pretty regularly how fast those DMs and those notifications can come in. And you wanna make sure that you're paying attention to them. One, to avoid you know, um, any issues or customer pain points, right? So you wanna be addressing any, anyone that could be DMing you with like an issue or something like that. You also want to show that you care and show that you want to interact with the people that are interacting with your business on social media. So when you stay on top of that social buzz, let's say we're joining industry conversations, let's say, you know, somebody tags me and I, you know, repost it. That helps you show that you're a key part, you're participating in this online conversation around your business or around your industry. And what that also does, more importantly, is it helps you control the narrative, right? And I love this example on the right of how one business did control the narrative here and one business did not. So we'll dissect this here for a second. We have this Twitter thread, right? Where it starts with, and this is where it's funny. So they start with, am I the only person that still uses Asana for project management? If Asana was watching for their mentions on Twitter, they should have jumped on that first right away, but they didn't. And so people started replying and Somebody brought in a competitor name right here. So click up. So say this person replies, I do use it. I know everyone's switching to click up, but I don't really know the difference. So right now, Asana and click up aren't really being painted in a super positive light right here. Click up finds this and jumps in and says, is there anything we can do to change your mind? Um, and you know, kind of does like a playful reply back. But that shows that click up notice, click up cares and ClickUp jumped on an opportunity that Asana did not jump on and totally could have to control their narrative. So I really like this example. I think it's a cool way to see how a business can kind of control the narrative. Um, one funny thing that I love to say about this is if you keep reading here, she goes, oh, I don't need anything, but you can tell the social team is really sweet. 
oh, you know, what a lovely exchange. What I will say is the girl that replied and said that everyone's switching to ClickUp, she didn't see a difference. And then when ClickUp responded and said, well, what can we do to change your mind? She said nothing. So don't be that person on social media, you know, mentioning a brand or a business and, you know, complaining about something without actually having a follow-up action on how you can solve that issue. I thought that was super funny too, but I think ClickUp handled it in a really, really great way. Um, and it looks great because even some other people are jumping in and saying, you know, commending ClickUp with a lovely exchange. That's a great example. All right. So I did touch on this a little bit too, but posting too little too often can really kill your social media account. Um, and we don't want your social media account to be falling victim to this, like a victim in some Halloween movie or something like that. You want to be posting in a frequency that's just right, right? So not too much, not too little, but just right. And that can be hard, obviously, there is no secret sauce or, you know, it's gonna take a little bit of trial and error. So you might try a certain posting frequency of like once a week or a couple of times a week. And then you might notice um, your interactions, your engagement rates vary depending on how you do that. Um, so you might find that once a week works better for you than a couple of times a week. So it will vary by business and by industry. However, there is some guidelines out there on the best times to post per platform. We do have a lot of content on that, so definitely check that out. Um, but something else you can use is like an online tool or a marketing tool or a marketing planning calendar, like you see over here on the right. Um, that can help people, you know, understand what um, would be best to post when and when they can post. And when you're pre-planning your posts like that like throughout the whole month you're able to take a bird's eye view at your frequency and understand, all right, I have, you know, this amount of posts planned this week, I have this amount of posts planned next week, you know, and you're able to balance out that frequency a little bit better. Um, and why that matters is because you don't want to tire out your audience with posting too much, but you also don't want to leave your audience hanging by posting too little. So when you balance it out like that, you're able to have a much better brand reputation on your social media. So another thing is you might not realize that the majority of your audience is probably following you on multiple social media platforms. So let's say you have a Facebook, you have a Twitter, and you have an Instagram. Well, if somebody's really passionate or a loyal customer, they're most likely following you on all three platforms. So when you say the same thing over and over again, exactly the same way on all three platforms, by the time they see it on their Twitter feed, after they see it on their you know, Instagram and their Facebook, they're not going to care. So you're going to want to have something fresh for your audience to look at on each platform. But the other reason you're not you're going to want to do that is because different social media platforms also necessitate different types of messaging. And there will be different audiences there on there for sure. Right. So if I'm on Facebook, I might be mentally prepared for a longer form to post than a I would necessarily expect on Instagram. Um, and then also, again, those post formats are going to be different. Again, with that Facebook versus Instagram example. Facebook, you can definitely get away with doing a text only or text based post, whereas Instagram, you obviously can only post if you have a photo or a video to go along with it. So here on the right, you'll see how this uh, uh, another local business that I know pretty well um, handles this really well. So on their Facebook page in this top example here, they do a text based only post and they do a little bit of a longer form post for the same exact event that they're also promoting on Instagram. If you look over on their Instagram on the bottom here, you'll see they have a much shorter caption. They throw in an emoji. You know, it's a little bit more fun, a little bit quicker, a little bit more concise, and they do have that great visual there as well. So that's how they can balance the same message. It's the same event, same promotion, just slightly different small tweaks in between each post across each platform. So again, like this is a great example of how you don't have to reinvent the wheel for every single post that you do. Um, but you do just need to do a little bit of small tweaks, keep it fresh, and make sure that it's aligned with the type of audiences and the type of expectations that will be on each platform. Um, when we're talking about the different types of posts that you can do in different placements, um, you also don't want to get into a rut of posting the same type of posts over and over again. That's going to limit your business um, when you're trying to get these, all these new placements on different types of platforms. Um, it can be really easy to fall into, you know, using all the time the type of post that you know it works. So if I'm familiar with photo only posts and the standard, you know, photo Instagram posts, 
I'm familiar with that. I've been doing that for the past five years when I've been marketing my business. So I don't really want to stray from that. But that's limiting me because when we look at Instagram today with all these different possible you know, um, placement areas like the explore page, like being found on hashtags and, you know, like scrolling through reels, you'll see that there's a lot of places that my regular photo posts might not be able to show up anymore. And I want to get those placements. So having those, you know, new different varying types of posts and having those different types of platforms to also leverage, right? So if I'm only posting on Instagram, but the majority of my audience is now on TikTok, then I should probably move over some of my content to TikTok as well. Um, so if you're hesitant on this, obviously it's not going to be, you know, easy. If we're not social media whizzes here, I get that. Um, you can also enlist the help of like an influencer or marketing partner. And what I mean by that is let's say you do want to try out reels. You want to make more reels. You want to make more TikToks, but you, you don't have a ton of experience. You're not really sure on how to, create the best type of reel or the best type of TikTok. And maybe also too, you just don't have time. Like maybe you do have a good handle on how to do different placements, but doing all those different types of placements and post types and testing them out, it does take time, right? So if you can't, you know, do that yourself, I would definitely say look into maybe some influencer marketing to avoid this mistake. Um, and what that means when I say influencer marketing, Everybody always thinks, oh, all right, so what I have to pay, you know, Kim Kardashian or some other influencer a million dollars to do a post for my business. No, I mean more like micro influencers that fit your industry that might cost just a little bit less um, to do a promotional post for you. And the great thing about leveraging an influencer is it's their job to know what's trending on social media. It's their job to create reels, to create TikToks. So they're able to do it for your business efficiently in a flash and on trend with whatever is popular. So in this example here, you know, the, the brand Glad um, did a reel with this influencer here. And what I would say is if I were to follow Glad trash bags on Instagram, the last thing I would be looking at is their account for a reel. Like I wouldn't be looking at a Glad Instagram account to find a reel from them. And I probably wouldn't even see it if they did create one. Um, and it probably wouldn't be as of high quality or as creative as this one, this wonderful influencer did for them instead. So they sent her these pink trash bags and then she did this cute little reel about why she loves the pink trash bags, which I thought was really cool. It's a creative way, you know, to get glad into that, you know, trending, um, Instagram real trend, um, uh, without having to do it themselves on their own account. I think using this influencer in this case really helped lift their account and, um, help them stand out. So another thing that you want to be doing to give your audience something fresh to look at is you want to be reposting content from others. So if you're not doing that, it's going to feel like a really one sided conversation from your followers where they're just always hearing you talk at them with your social media posts. Right. Your followers want to hear from others. They want multiple different voices. They want to hear, you know, multiple different perspectives in your in your content. And they also want to be part of the conversation, too. They want to see their, you know, post being reposted. And when they see that other followers of yours have a post reposted to your page from them, then they'll be more inclined to try and tag you a little bit more because they'll be excited to get featured on your page too. So try reposting from other businesses, other creators or influencers, or even other customers um, to just give your followers something fresh to ingest. Um, the social media account for Slim Jim, definitely check it out. They kill it at the social media game. They are super good about reposting um, content, as you can see here with the swim gym social, you know, little Snapchat. It's obviously a customer Snapchat that they created. They sent it into Slim Jim and Slim Jim reposted it to their page. The other thing that Slim Jim does really well, other than reposting content, is they're just really good at like hopping on social media trends and, you know, this brand has been around for years and years and years, but they've transformed their brand now on social media by following these trends, making these memes, making these different types of placements, reposting this content to transform into the super young forward, you know, fresh and forward brand um, that has a huge Instagram following, you know, and if it wasn't for those, you know, different types of post placements, those reposts, they probably wouldn't have the Instagram following that they do, but because their content is so fresh and so funny, 
they have like over a million followers, which is crazy to think about because it's literally just a beef jerky brand that you get at like 7-Eleven. So it's pretty, pretty interesting. Um, so something else that you want to do if people are reposting, you know, or want their content to be reposted by your business, or if they are interacting with your post, which is awesome, like if they are commenting, um, if they are, you know, liking your posts and so on, um, you want to actually commend them for that. You want to recognize that. You want to show that you care and that you want that interaction from them. So if your followers aren't going to be inclined to engage with your business if they don't know what's in it for them. To be honest, like a lot of the folks that are seeing your posts and want to interact, they might be like, well, so-and-so is going to see that I like this, or I don't know if I should reshare this to all of my followers. So make it a little bit more enticing for them to interact with your posts by, you know, turning those engagement posts that you're trying to drive engagement for into social media contests or giveaways. Say, if you, you know, drop a comment below, you know, I'll pick the best comment to win a small prize or, you know, repost this post to your story for, you know, a giveaway at the end of the month. Those are the types of posts that are going to drive engagement and have your, drive your users to feel inclined to actually interact with them. They're not going to just interact with them, you know, just for the sake of it, unless they really feel strongly about the content you're posting because they're on social media to interact with their friends, right? They're on social media to like their friends post, comment on their friends posts or their family's posts. So when they see a business's post, it's more going to be about, all right, what is this post serving for me? What is, what's in it for me if I comment on this post or if I like this post or if I share this post? So showing your appreciation for that by just commenting back, um, you know, doing those giveaways, those prizes for when they do interact, or even just, you know, posting a quick thank you every so often is really going to make the difference um, here. And this is a really good example of a small business, you know, giving a thank you to a customer. So this customer is clearly open and was open and able to be posted to her social media page. She was willing to do it. So in return, she shouted her out, she tagged her on the post, and she showed her appreciation for her, which I think is really important. So one crazy, crazy social media mistake. Now we're getting a little, little wild here um, with our scary social media mistakes. This is a scary one. This is a scary one. Buckle up. You can buy followers on social media, believe it or not. And I, it's very, it's a very real, very sad thing that some businesses in niche markets or small local businesses feel tempted to do, right? Um, when you're, you know, a small business looking to grow on social media, it can feel discouraging when you don't have a ton of followers, you're not getting a ton of interaction. So you can be really tempted to buy followers, but you absolutely in no circumstances would ever want to actually do that because your real followers that are following your business will catch on to this. This is again, connecting back to people are wary of these fake accounts of these, you know, buying followers. People call out influencers all the time for buying followers. So it's a very real common thing that you absolutely do not want to do. It's first of all, going to ruin your rep reputation because when your real followers do catch on, they're going to say, Hey, you've been kind of, it's kind of sketchy that you're buying these followers. That seems insincere. That seems dishonest. It also could potentially get you shut down because all, all platforms, I believe, have policies against buying followers or having fake followers. You know, um, they're really cracking down on that, you know, between bots and everything else. You definitely do not want fake followers on your profile to get you shut down. Um, and then also, too, the you can imagine that the businesses that offer fake followers to you that you could buy from are probably not the most ethically sound, right? So we see that in this review here from this poor, poor small business and I do not want you guys to become, you know, a statistic of or become this person here that said they bought followers and it was a horrible scam. They were inundated with tons and tons of followers, more than they paid for. They had so many notifications, they couldn't manage it. It's just terrible. It's really sad in a way. So you definitely want to avoid the social media mistake at all costs. If you have budget to put towards your social media, put it towards social media ads. That's going to help you get in front of audiences that you may have not been able to reach organically and help grow your following that way. So much better use of your budget than buying big followers. 
So speaking of budget, you also want to avoid being super rigid with your budget. That's going to limit you. So having that flexibility with your budget is going to be really important in your social media advertising. Um, and obviously, you know, it's not always feasible to just dump more money into a campaign. That's not what I mean. I mean being ready and creative with your budget and being ready and nimble to adjust your budget according to whatever your social media marketing and advertising throws at you. For example, if you notice that a certain campaign that you didn't put a ton of budget behind starts to take off, you don't want to limit yourself by, you know, just keeping that budget super low. You might want to reallocate and borrow some budget from, you know, a standard, you know, an average performing campaign and move that budget into there. So just being flexible, your, your performance is going to ebb and flow, so your budget should as well. Um, to help manage and make sure that you're staying on top of your budget and you're keeping your budget flexible, definitely try a marketing budget template. We have a ton of resources on that. Um, and also make sure that your reporting and tracking is um, good to go. So that way you can really understand the performance and the impact of your budget before you, you know, make any crazy calls um, when, in terms of budget. Last but definitely not least um, is this retargeting mistake, which is not using retargeting. You definitely want to be using retargeting in your social media ads um, because it may, helps you to make the most of an audience that might already be familiar with your business, right? Because we, with retargeting, we're showing to folks that have already interacted with our business before, so they're definitely interested. So that can help you turn those prospects into customers, obviously increase engagement, but most importantly, also helps you stay ahead of the competition because most likely your competition is using social retargeting as we can see with the statistic over on the right where the majority of businesses are already using this. So if you're not using it yet, definitely worth checking in. So I know that was a ton of mistakes. We definitely went on a whirlwind of a journey. So let's kind of bring it all together here. Just some general do's and don'ts or some you know main do and don't takeaways from these social media mistakes is you clearly want to be aligned on your business and what you're promoting elsewhere, right? So thinking about our goals, thinking about our branding, right? What am I promoting in my other advertising assets outside of social media that I should also be doing here on my social media accounts? Also, you know, you don't want to hop on the trend on a trend just for the sake of it. It can end up going really wrong. For example, with that IHOP example, they're trying to be clever, trying to be funny. Um, and it just totally missed the mark versus Slim Jim does memes and, you know, hops on trends all the time, but they do it in a really creative way. Uh, so they're able to work, work with it. So some trends are going to be right for your business. Some aren't, and that's okay. Uh, but trying out some trends, you know, just, you know, be, be selective with the ones that you choose um, because you want to stay true to your business and true to your brand. You also want to be promoting your business regularly. And I know it sounds funny to say, but you can get so caught up in these social media mistakes that you forget to even actually be promoting your business. So try and stick to the 411 rule of social media, which means for every six posts that you put out there on social media, two of them should be self-serving, should be promotional, right? So it could be a soft sell and a hard sell or whatever you need to do to actually be promoting your business. And then the other four posts can be fun posts, they can be tests of new types of posts, they could be reposts. Uh, things like that. Just another way to make sure that you're actually promoting your business on a consistent schedule. And then lastly, don't treat it like you would a personal platform. It can be really easy to do that because the majority of us, our experience on social media so far has come from our personal experiences and our personal accounts. But right now, we're looking at marketing your business on social media, which is of course going to look different. So um, making sure that you're not getting too personal with what you're sharing, or you know, posting lower quality posts that you would be okay with sharing on your personal account, um, you definitely just wanna make sure you're tightened up to what your brand account should be shooting for. So I know that was a ton of information here and we have about 10 minutes left. So what we're going to do now is switch into a poll. So if this felt like a lot of info, you want more help on how to avoid social media mistakes, how to elevate your social media marketing, Maybe there was some things that I covered that you have more questions on, or you have a really specific situation within your unique business or your unique industry. I highly recommend hitting yes on this poll here that should be taking over your screen um, where you could be potentially um, be, you know, you could get some more help for your um, social media marketing 
Um, so definitely, if you feel like you need more help, if you feel like um, you have more questions or you have a really specific situation, I highly, highly recommend hitting yes here because you'll be able to get individualized attention and individualized advice um, from one of our experts here at a time of your choosing. So definitely um, go ahead and um, fill out that poll if you feel like you need more info, because I know this was a lot. So with that, we're going to switch into the um, audio portion of the webinar where we're going to cover the Q&A. So the poll is going to remain on the screen for you folks while I talk through some of the questions for the last 10 minutes or so here. So we have a ton, a ton of questions coming in. This is awesome. So many questions, holy smokes. Um, I wanna get through all of them. So there are a ton of things here that I can cover here. So a couple of questions here, and let me see. There, keep those questions coming in uh, for this Q&A session. Uh, this is a great question from Denise. How long do you suggest a video ad on social media should be? This is a great question, Denise, and you're probably going to hear different answers from various resources. But um, what I like to um, keep in mind is I try and think of the minimum video requirements for different platforms. So, for example, on YouTube, a video ad, you know, that isn't skippable has to be under 15 seconds. And I think that's a good guideline for social media too. If I don't want someone to skip through my video, then I probably wanna keep it pretty short, right? So maybe 10, 5, 10, 15 seconds. Um, if I am doing a skippable ad on YouTube, that could be over 15 seconds and the same kind of goes for social media. Um, if I have more in-depth information to cover on my video, I can keep it longer than 15 seconds, but I probably wanna keep it under a minute um, and it is going to be dependent on the reels ramifications that you're shooting for or like versus like a TikTok. Um, so those are going to have different um, um, requirements as well. So I would say base it off the platform requirements, but also in general, just try and keep them pretty short. Um, usually under a minute is a good call, but don't think I haven't seen longer videos on social media because that definitely can happen too. Um, So let's see some other questions here. This is great. Keep those questions coming in. There's a ton. So Julie asked, do you agree in keeping social media light and super, superficial on controversy? Good question. Um, so social media, this is, this is a really good question that I think a lot of brands probably struggle with is should they be, you know, addressing um, certain issues that are trending on social media and, and so on. And I would say it's going to really depend on your business, your audience and your industry, right? So if an issue or a controversy relates to your industry, you most likely want to address it on social media. But if you're hopping on a trend just for the sake of hopping on it, that can look like passive activism. So you just wanna be you know, a little bit more selective of when you choose to join the conversation. But I'd say generally for social media marketing for businesses, you're usually gonna see it be pretty light. Um, let's see some other questions here. A couple of questions, folks here, Gloria asked, do I recommend Canva to build social media posts and ads? And then Jim also asked the same thing. He said, I use Canva for my social media video my social media posts and ads. Um, definitely would recommend using them. Uh, they're a great resource, they're free, um, unless you have the pro version. So it's pretty common. We have some social media templates on there as well for on Canva that you can find on our blog. So definitely check that out. Um, I definitely would recommend it because the more you can pre-plan your posts, the better. Um, Larry asked a, a good, or here we go. Larry asked a ton, he said he has a ton of questions. Um, if he could have someone contact me, definitely hit yes in that poll, Larry. That's how we'll have folks be contacting you folks. So if you do have more questions and want to reach out to an expert, um, definitely uh, hit yes in that poll here. Karen asked, um, how many hashtag, hashtags per post do I recommend and should, I po should people post at the same time every day? So for hashtags, this is a really common question and we've done a lot of research on this and we found that um, the majority of posts have around seven hashtags, more or less. Um, so hopefully that can give you a guiding number to go off of. 
Um, but I wouldn't try and go crazy on hashtags. I think a lot of businesses do that. And it's just kind of a bad look. Um, yes, hashtags help your business get found, but try and stick to your core hashtags. I would almost treat hashtags like I would keywords where you want to be a little bit more selective. You want to just stick to your core terms. That's kind of the same idea for hashtags. You want to be sticking to your core hashtags that are going to drive you the most traffic. Um, and as far as posting at the same time every day, um, that's actually a common myth within social media. You don't have to post the same time every day. It's going to vary platform by platform. Um, so you might notice that a few hours window tends to be your best performing. So try and stick with that. Okay, this is a great question here. Keep these questions coming in. These are awesome. Um, so Darian asked, as a corporate entity, is it helpful to reach out to other companies and interact to with other companies to bring people back to the page and boost engagement? Um, other than contests, like what are some other tax tactics to boost engagement? Great question, Darian. Definitely be reaching out to other brands and businesses um, and corporations on social media. They are all, you're all in the same boat on social media, business to business, um, when you're trying to promote your brand. Um, so more often than not, you'll find other similar businesses like yours open to doing a partnership, open to doing tags. Um, so that's definitely a, a good tactic and another way to boost engagement. And the great thing about that is you're sharing followers. So if you have, if you're tagging one another, let's say company to company on social media, both of your individual followings will see each other and you know go to one another. So I think that's a great idea and a great way to drive some drive engagement. Another few ways to drive engagement is just doing those really captivating posts. Um, like I mentioned with the Slim Jim example, you know, having those really creative, meme-worthy, funny posts or trendy posts or different types of, um, of post types like reels, like TikToks. Those are just killing it in the game, engagement game lately because people are on social media to have fun, to share content, funny content with their friends and so on. So I would say trying to think a little bit out of the box with your um, social media posts um, outside of your promotional posts, I think it's gonna help drive engagement too. So Gloria asked, I did not cover my email marketing. Is that still a viable option? I find them useful if they have a flash sale most of the time and it feels like too many emails. So email marketing in relation to social media marketing, they one another can definitely go together and email marketing is definitely a viable option. I would recommend checking out our YouTube and local IQ on local IQ and WordStream YouTube channels. We do have some other webinars where we cover email marketing um, and other tactics as well and how they relate to social media. So definitely check those out. Um, so Sam asked another interesting question here. From a small business perspective, social media looks like it takes an inordinate amount of time. A small business person realistically can't address all platforms effectively. What platform best leads to more sales if you were to use only one or two platforms? Ah, this is a great question. So it is true, it's going to take a lot of time and you might not always necessarily have the time, which I understand. Um, try leveraging online tools to help you manage as many platforms as possible, but the best platform is going to vary for different businesses. Uh, we have a lot of resources on this, so depending on your industry or your target market, they might be on a different platform than um, you know the target market for a different type of company. So usually, you know, you're going to see your big, your major platforms like the Facebooks, the Instagrams, the LinkedIn's, the Snapchats, the Twitters, those are going to be, you know, probably your main ones, but there are also a lot of other ones like TikTok's definitely on the rise and other platforms that you could consider instead that might be a better fit. So it's going to look different for everyone. There are a ton more questions here and I wish I could cover all of them. I love talking about this clearly. I could talk about social media marketing all day. Um, but if you didn't get your question answered, definitely make sure you hit yes in that poll before we close this out uh, so that you can get your questions answered individually with an expert. With that, I know we're right at time. So thank you everyone for joining. I really appreciate you all popping on to dive into this topic with me. Be on the lookout for the recording later on and for our future webinars um, in the coming months. Um, thank you all again, and I hope you have a wonderful day.